We are setting up camp. And it is freaking cold and we have no cell signal. And I have to send my wife and Uncle Voodoo's wife a message through the little Jarman InReach Mini. And I don't know how hard that's going to be. What this is, I'm trying to go find some firewood and there's some trees with these little wood sticks and rope. Can you see? That's creepy. I don't understand what is going on here. Weird. We are making fire, and it's like 32, 33 degrees out here at, what time is it? 11 o'clock, 10.59, it is cold, and you can't even see the rest of the campsite. So I survived the night in the new MSR tent. It worked good. I didn't feel any wind. I didn't feel any drafts. I do need to get a footprint for it. Right now I used a poncho, which is better than nothing. And the ground is frozen. Like ice crystals. I forgot my gimbal for the iPhone. So hope this isn't too choppy. So we had a nice fire going last night, which was needed because it was in the low 30s. This is a really nice campsite. There's a really nice creek over here. I'm trying to walk slow if I don't trip. There's Uncle Voodoo's bike, his tent set up. So I got to sleep, the sounds of that all night. Sun's finally coming up. Hopefully it warms up. Yeah, this campsite's really cool. There's like boulders everywhere. It's like big huge boulders everywhere. This tree looks super cool. I saw this last night when I was trying to get firewood. It's like hollowed out. And of course, some trash in there. I wish I brought my gimbal. I got one of those handheld little DJI gimbals, but I haven't really learned to use it very well yet. So, and I was really running out of space. <laughs> All right, Uncle Voodoo is making this reverse fire type thing. Look at this. It's like, let me try to get out of this. So basically, it's logs going this way, this way, this way, with a lot of space in between. So the big logs are on the bottom, smaller logs on top. The theory is. Instead of putting all your kindling on the bottom and then piling wood onto that, you start with your kindling on top, and as it burns, breaks down, turns to ash, it drops down through everything else. And it's, it's a self-feeding fire is what it is. So we shall see as this works. No guarantees this is going to work. I haven't done this in probably a decade. And I'm still trying to wake up. <laughs> so Uncle Voodoo's done all this work, and I've just been a lazy bum this morning. <laughs> 
I might cheat and dump that fuel out of that non-working stove on it. Yeah, man. In fact, I think I'm going to do it. It's not cheating. It's improvising. Yeah. Now, you do have to get a good-sized kindling pile up top so you can feed everything below. And we have fire. Things going. So it's got to get the coals to start dropping down into the rest of that and it'll spread. More footage of the campsite. And the voodoo reverse fire going on over there. Okay, so the reverse fire is working. Uh, it's really windy, so it's not working ideally. You can see where the coals have dropped. I don't know if you can see inside there. But all the way down to the bottom logs are burning way down at the bottom. The smaller wood on the top is burning and then that the coals and ambers, whatever, are dropping and catching the bottom logs on. Pretty neat. Pretty neat little voodoo magic trick there, Uncle Voodoo. And you're welcome. We have warmth. And I like this little tripod. That was a, uh, a Kickstarter purchase. The only thing I've ever bought off Kickstarter was that. I dig it. You can't buy them no more. They don't make that. Anymore. Oh, I don't dig it so much. We found a really cool mine to look at. So we're going to try to explore it and see what we find. Hey, if I don't fall. Apparently there's bats and stuff laying in there. I don't see any hanging up here. That looks really cool. Alright, this is the MSR Hubba Hubba tent that I bought yesterday on the phone. <laughs> kind of slight unseen. I liked it so far. The setup wasn't, you know, wasn't too bad. It's pretty easy setup. I didn't have a footprint, so I used a um, poncho that I just had on the bike. It has this little vestibule. It has a vestibule on both sides. So one thing that's kind of neat is it doesn't matter which way you face it because both sides are the same. You have a door on both sides and a vestibule on both sides. So you can't mess it up and set up the tent backwards. Hand warmers and body warmers. I ended up getting too hot with these. I had to take them out of the sleeping bag. So that's a good testament to the warmth of the sleeping bag. This is the North Face Cat's Meow. Uh, 20 degree sleeping bag, negative seven Celsius. All closed up, it felt a little too tight, too restrictive for me. So I ended up unzipping it and using it as just like a top blanket. And once I did that, uh, I was fine all night, didn't get cold. And I also had just the extra fleece that I put on top of the sleeping mat, which I don't know if I needed it or not. The sleeping mat, that's the Big Agnes Q-Core Q-Core Deluxe. It looks really narrow. It's only 20 inches wide. And I thought it would be too small, but I didn't find myself falling, you know, over the edges or anything. So it actually worked out nicely. It kept me warm. It never got cold and it never deflated. So I didn't have any like pressure points hitting the ground, you know, like a hip or shoulder or something. So I was really impressed with it. It's the first air mattress blow up style like this I've ever used. So the tent definitely had enough room. I had my riding jacket, my riding pants, jeans, jacket, sweatshirt, riding boots, my helmet. And I had room, like all, of, all my gear was staged around the, the sleeping mat. And I wasn't bumping into the gear at night. Like, it felt roomy enough for one person. I definitely would not want to do two people in here, not with gear. How was it inflating the bag or the the mat with that airbag? Yeah, the the sleeping pad came with the, this little airbag, 
And you basically just open it up and then just close it and it fills up with air. And then when that's connected to the bag, you just kind of push it in the air. And it surprisingly, it worked really well. Didn't take that long to fill up. So that was a nice touch for the, uh, the filling, up, filling up the bag, the air mattress. I like the D door as well. So you don't unzip your door and then have to climb over your door to get in the tent. It hangs out of the way. That's a really nice touch too. Yeah. So I'm definitely happy with it. The funny part is though, I didn't have any of this gear before yesterday. And when Uncle Voodoo called and said, hey, I'm going moto camping. I'm like, I don't have any gear. All my gear was tent, uh, car camping tent. Like car camping tents, like big, huge stuff. So he was actually at a store. What was the name of the store? Walkabout Outfitters. Walkabout Outfitters. So I called them. That was up in Lexington. And I'm, I was down in Buckhannon. I called them while Uncle Voodoo's in the store picking up some gear. I'm like, hey, can I give you guys my credit card? I need a tent, sleeping bag, and a sleeping mat <laughs> to go moto camping tonight. And they actually, this was actually a floor model they had to take down because there's the only one they had. And this is the, the only thing I picked out that I knew I wanted was this tent because I wanted to try it. And I didn't know anything about the sleeping pad. I didn't know anything about the sleeping bag. But I talked to the guy on the phone, kind of told him what I wanted, and he's the one who suggested the sleeping bag and the sleeping pad. And so it was slight unseen. I paid over the phone with a credit card, and then Uncle Voodoo picked it up for me. And it worked out pretty good, except for the only problem is when I packed all my gear, I didn't have any space for the new gear. So I had to take a rucksack and I had to backpack all the new gear in the rucksack to get up here. So today when we leave, hopefully I can pack down better and not have to wear a backpack because with the big bag on the back of the bike, plus a backpack was just really annoying because the backpack kept hitting the bag. So maybe next time I'll, I'll actually plan better and pack better. <laughs> All right, we just found something cool on the MSR Hubba Hubba tent. It's got like a little kick out for the little side vents, which I didn't know. So that keeps it open so you get some airflow in there, which I'm glad I didn't have the airflow last night. So that was pretty cool. Uh, copper spur one copper spur one and he's got the little kickouts too on his vent up here that's pretty nice touch i've never yeah, seen these, that these little tent. toggles that hold the doors open and stuff they're they're not friendly to use they're not like user friendly so when you're trying to get in your tent and do this undo this it's a pain in the butt yeah they're never too easy Here's what she looks like on the inside. He's got the fancy blanket. Yeah, this is a, it's called an Enigma from Enlightened Equipment. And this thing is light as a feather. It's, a, it's either a zero or a 10 degree down quilt. I feel I like this. <laughs> it feels like nothing. Yeah, I think it's light as a feather. That is cool. And that's a climate static V deluxe insulated uh, mattress. And, it, and the weird baffles in it, it, it's not uncomfortable or anything. Works pretty well. Throw this back in there. What about that pillow? I need a pillow. This is my Thermo Rest. I don't even know what model this is. It's the big boy. But it kind of folds up into itself. It's got this little stuff, stuff feel pocket on it. Yeah, that was the one thing I was missing. Yeah, that's a pretty nice pillow. I think I, I don't carry it backpacking just because it weighs way more than what I would like. But for moto camping, it's fine. Yeah, I definitely need one of those. And you got a small vest to go here. And you've got my helmet. And stuff like that. Pretty nice.
Your zippers look like they work easier than mine. Sometimes it's kind of hit and miss. Yeah, where mine has the two seams, it snags right there for a second. So that's got a huge vent. And it's got pockets right here. There's pockets here and up in the ceiling. So you can stuff things up in the ceiling if they keep a light and stuff like that in there. Here's a waterfall that we came down to. It's pretty neat. It'll be really fun to come down here in the summer and swim in these little water holes. All right, we had a good little camp out in the cold. Got to test a lot of new gear. Got to see some really cool waterfalls and a little mine. Um, had a good campfire going last night. And now we're gonna check out another waterfall and I guess call it a day or a weekend. All right, thanks for watching and see you around. Stopped at Natural Bridge to uh, put a sweatshirt on and put my earplugs in and turn off the GoPros. Uh, it is really cold. So I want to do a quick walk around to show how packed down I am. So my tank bag, I have it unzipped because it's like this much taller. So a couple of inches and it's full. The panniers are full. The new tent on top of this pannier. This old duffel bag full of gear. Um, <laughs> my rucksack. Oh, all it's all that's in here is basically, I think, just the uh, new sleeping bag, and then a few other small things in this pocket. That pannier's full. It's. It's all lopsided. It looks all funny. Yeah, I need a new bag. I need to figure out something. You know what? That's covering up my tail light. That can't be safe. Um, let me try to fix that guy. There you go. Let's up out of the way. So, yeah. That looks that probably look ridiculous. Rolling down the road in an overloaded Himalayan. But it did good with all this extra weight. A lot better than I thought it would. All right, it was definitely a fun weekend. It was worth it. It's worth spending all the extra money for the smaller camping gear and lighter. I definitely want to lighten my load like lighten my daily stuff and also my camping gear all right thanks for watching and hit that like and subscribe buttons and i'll see you soon